Coach, how would you, uh, if you could, compare Jimmy's performance, or Jimmy's growth, I should say, to maybe bring Quinn at the same stage of his career? Well, the only pr problem in reference for me is the fact that I came in on Brady's third year, whereas with Jimmy, I've had him from from the beginning to from the beginning till now. But uh, I'd have to say, you know, based off of my off-field work with him in this spring, leading into this season, that you know, it's at, at least it's at least comparable, if not heading with the arrow pointing up. What you saw after watching the film on the defense that yesterday you hadn't, you know, missed some of the game? Well, I mean, there were, uh, obviously there were a lot of good things to start off with. You know, right off the bat, when, besides the obvious shutout, you know, you know, going two, you know, two at 11 on third down and throwing a fourth down, a, you know, so two at a 12. I mean that usually bodes well for getting off the field, and then three times, three times they're down in the red zone without coming up with any points. You know, there, there are critical, critical factors. Three turnovers in a game. I did get, I uh, did get to see all three of those, so I didn't miss any of those. I think for the for the most part, you know, they put there was a lot of us moving the line of scrimmage the other way, even though they they did hit us for some runs. They hit us for four big runs and a pass. But, you know, we had two sacks and four tackles for loss. And to be honest with you, Tom, we had another four sacks that we could have had that, you know, we missed a few tackles there. And I think that's going to be one of the point of points of emphasis with the defensive staff this week going into Michigan. It's going to have to, we're going to have to do a better job tackling because there were some times where we came completely free where Kaepernick did a nice job avoiding, avoiding the pressure and getting out, getting out of trouble type of defense though, a dominant defense that you, I assume you want to have, wouldn't it be a case that you, you wouldn't, the safeties usually wouldn't be the leading tacklers on the team, you, you'd want the linebackers or someone else to be the leading tacklers? Well, that, that's, you'd want the linebackers or, or down safeties. So when you say safeties, when a, line, when a safety's down at linebacker depth, they're a linebacker. You're calling them safety out of semantics, but anytime you see Kyle or Harrison down at linebacker depth, they have the same run force as the, as the whether it's the weak side or strong side, you know, you just bump those linebackers. So if he's down on the weak side, you know, the same linebacker on the one side and the weak safety would have the same res exact responsibilities. And bump them down on the other side, now the strong safety and the weak and the, and, and the will linebacker would have the same responsibilities. So that is true unless to, when they're making the plays from the secondary, you know, but when they're down into the run force, it's just like they're playing a linebacker position. On Floyd, talking to his teammates, they all talk about how he's, you know, kind of a jokester, lighthearted, you know, kind of fun-loving guy. Then, you know, we get up and talk yeah, to him. Yeah, he's a goofball. Yeah, you yeah. got him right. Uh, well, I mean, when he, <laughs> when he talks to us, I mean, he just <laughs> kind of shuts it down. What, can you kind of expand on his personality a little bit, how you've seen that? Uh, and see, talk about how his personality has kind of evolved over the last year. First of all, he loves to play the game. Here's somebody who loves to, who loves to play the game. You know, I'm not saying players don't you know, like playing in games, but you know, he's one of those guys who has a lot of fun, and you know, you you see a lot of you know, you see a lot of emotion out of him because by nature, he's a relatively quiet guy, but he's hardworking and he's meticulous and he wants to be great, and you know, he has a chance of really accomplishing that goal, that that desire, and he's grown a lot just from his first year till now, and I think the sky's the limit. I think this guy's the real deal. You think he has a be chance to be the, the best receiver ever to come through here? Uh, Golden would argue with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so many games in the past two years, you could, even if you won, you might find a mistake or two. Yesterday, you really have to think to find a glaring mistake. Having looked at the tape, aren't you, I mean, what did you see? I think this is a perfect day to be a football coach. Utopia. Because when you win 35 to nothing, we're going to be the most critical bunch of guys that will ever be because the players are most receptive to constructive criticism when things go well. When things don't go well, everyone goes into a shell, a defense mechanism. This is as good a day as you can come. Would you like for me to give you a couple of examples? Please. How about the second half after scoring five out of your first six times? You have three drives that really get stalled 
on all, sh on all relatively short situations, a fourth and relatively short, and two third, a third and two, and third and one. I mean, so I won't be harping on those five out of six touchdowns they scored right there. I'll be talking, I'll be showing, you know, you know, here's, the, here's a fourth and three, here's a third and two, and going over why the play broke down and, you know, you know how we got to do better. Because today is the best day to teach because they feel good about themselves. Today's the day we get to bring them back down to earth. In that vein, what was the reason to put in Dane Christ in the second quarter when it's still close, just for one play? Because well, we had designed, if they're doing this, this is what we're going to do. It was only going to be a drive starter. You notice it was the only time in the game where we went from the sideline right to the line of scrimmage. And we only did that one time. And I, we had run two wildcat plays to see what they were going to do. And the first wildcat play, we miss a block or else we have a gash on a run to the left side. The next time we run one to the left side for about 20 and then we have a phantom holding call, which I'm sure you'll find it a phantom holding call too. You know, so we have two, two plays from that, but in both cases, you know, we are looking at the, when we call those plays, like when Tim had asked a question before, we call those plays, we're looking at those formations to see what we're going to get, to see if you're setting up that very play you're talking about. And they gave us a look saying, okay, bring it on, fellas. And I go, next time we go there, and I thought we were going to score a touchdown on this play now. Because if they would have done what they did the first two times, you know, Rudolph's next thing he would have done was hitting the pylon because there would have been no one over there. But it didn't work out that way. So I get, they guessed right and I guessed wrong. Charlie. Do you have a set criteria as to when you might take Jimmy out for the day like you did yesterday when you were up by a pretty good uh, score? Well, I think one of the things I need to do is I have to get Dane Christ ready to play. So I don't mean bringing Dane Christ in and just letting him hand off on inside zone, you know, on, on run on every play. So, you know, given the opportunity, I want to get him time. But, you know, I mean, who wants to take that number seven out? I mean, certainly not me, not the way he's playing. He wouldn't want to take that kid out. Uh, but I think that the more we can get Dane involved running the normal offense, the better it will be for the future of the program. The play of uh, Brian Smith and his ability to get to the backfield. You know, Brian Smith is not personality-wise, but as far as his passion for the game, Brian Smith is a guy who just loves to play football. He just loves to play football. And he can run, and he has athleticism, and he's physical, and he has fun. You know, he's, he's a guy that I just uh, like being around on the football field because, you know, he's got that, 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 that special something in him. You know, I just, you know, I just think he's going to be a pain in the butt for everyone we go against.